Look what we found. I'm sure not everyone will immediately guess what it is. That, my friend, is an old hand drill. Yes, they used to drill holes in wood and metal with this kind of a device. And although this one is pretty shabby and has been covered with rust for decades, we're going to try, as always, to resurrect it and breathe new life into this tool. The drill was so rusted and sour that it was very difficult to turn it. We were afraid it would break, so we went outside and started a restoration process. In addition to the rust on the drill, there was some dirt, which we scrubbed off with a stiff brush, which had hardened because we forgot to wash it from the varnish. Next, we took penetrating oil and lubricated all the joints to make it much easier to unscrew. It took a little effort, but one by one, the bolt seemed to respond to our persistence and unscrewed. After unscrewing all the bolts, we can completely disassemble the drill. We need to unscrew this chuck where the drill bit is attached. But I had no idea how to do it. I tried just to twist the lower part, but it stuck firmly. Then we tried to do it with pliers and other tools. It took a few hours, but nothing worked at all, so we had to resort to more radical measures. After making two points on the bottom of the chuck, we started to drill two holes there. We put two bolts in them, and later we tried to unscrew it with a wrench. We were sure it would work, but it wouldn't no matter what we tried. We decided to heat it up with a gas torch, to see if the heat fluctuations would help the threads move out of the way. In addition, we put it in a small cap and poured some penetrating oil on it. The rubber band couldn't hold it and it didn't work, and we were afraid to clamp it in a vise so as not to damage the notch. Then I figured out how to clamp it between two oak planks and a miracle happened. It worked and the thread moved! The drill was completely disassembled. We got access to the contents of the chuck and moved on to the cleaning of all the parts. We start with the center tube, which is the base of the drill. Using a wire brush, we clean it of large pieces of rust. Then we fix it into the drill and take a strip of sandpaper. We need to pull the sandpaper well and turn on the drill. The tube starts to rotate and cleans itself due to friction against the sandpaper. But at one point, something went wrong, and my hand almost wrapped around the drill. My finger hurt a lot, but it was still in one piece. I had to be more careful. After playing with the rod with different gradations of sandpaper, we got a very good result. Now we turn to the other side of the tube to process the part where we clamped in the drill. We sand the end by hand. And let's not forget about the inside of the tube. It seems to be easy to clean such an element, but in order to get a good quality, you need to get into each hole and spend a lot of time. In the end, we get a good result. The next part is a shaft with a small gear. We brush away what we can, but the grease and dirt between the cogs has been fossilized for a long time. So we will try to use a small wire circle brush on the drill. It does its job, but the final point is made by the big circle on the drill. We fasten the shaft in the chuck and clean the smooth parts with abrasive sponge, the same way as we did before. So then, we have this kind of a result. And the result seems to be very good. That's how the first day went, and the next morning, having cleaned the raindrops off of the table, we took up the next part. We fix it in the clamps, and the drill in a vise, and clean the surface with the nozzle. Cool! Look, after just a couple of seconds, we already see the clean steel. But to make the surface even more cleaner, we manually level it on a flat surface. 
Look at how cool it cleans! The sides are still ugly though. We process them the same way. Now it's time for this piece. We clamped it in a vise and hoped to rub off the coating with a wire brush. But it was almost impossible to remove. So we took a gas torch and decided to heat the part to burn all of the paint. And it worked! Now we can easily remove the rest of the paint with the same nozzle. Do not forget to remove the rust from the hole for the tube. And we have a perfectly clean surface. Let's move on to probably one of the most complicated parts. This is the big gear that transmits the torque to the shaft of the drill. We use a wire brush to remove the dirt and underneath it we see the old paint. Which we will also have to remove, because it's all cracked. Surprisingly, a regular screwdriver does a great job. Apparently, the paint is very old. We clean up the rest with a drill. Now let's get to the bottom part of the chunk. At first, we planned to weld those holes, but then we thought that they didn't look so bad. And in the future, no one would struggle with it if it needs to be unscrewed again. First, we cut off a piece of a body of an old marker. And put it on the shaft that we cleaned earlier. We screw our parts on top and that way it will rest against the marker and the shaft won't stick out of it interfering with the processing. Put it all in the drill and clean the circles from rust and debris using a piece of sandpaper. We clean the threads with a wire brush. Done! And now we clean the other side. We need it to do the same with the top of the chunk but we won't be able to clean it with sandpaper, because it will smooth out all that even the notch can't put there for a good grip. Take a small circle of brush, and slowly and gently remove all the plague with it. We clean the insides as well. We can still clean the cone-shaped front with sandpaper, it's really nice to see an old piece transforming right in front of your eyes and sparkling like never before due to your work. There are some small parts remaining that are not easy to work with because they are difficult to grasp and are easily damaged. But little by little, we did this and managed to refresh their appearance considerably. And now, we get to the wooden handle. Where the wood itself is a little bit damaged and the metal part is pretty rusty. I think it can be restored without remodeling. We carefully clean the iron and in the same way, we remove the top layer of wood. It's beautiful, but it looks even cooler if you cover the surface with flaxseed oil. In an hour, it will soak in and you will be able to grab the handle with your hands. The second handle of the drill was obviously homemade, so we decided to remake it completely. We took our familiar broomstick and also saw off a piece from it, which we will make the new handle. Drill a coaxial hole inside its end and snug a bolt in there. We cut off the cap from it and now it allows us to fix the workpiece in the drill. By taking coarse sandpaper and giving it speed, in few minutes we manage to form a new shape of the handle. We generously cover it with oil and leave it to dry. Ok, now we need to degrease and coat this part with this primer paint. It's not difficult, the main thing is not to overdo it with the paint, so that there would not be any leaks. And now, we need to do the same by painting the part with black glossy paint. Just look at what a professional painter I am! If any of you need to paint a car, then please feel free to contact me. Then we wipe the next part. And this time, we take regular red paint and cover the inner side of it.
When the paint is dried, we put bolt inside, which we fasten in the drill to remove unnecessary paint drips. Well folks, after a few days of work, the hand drill kit is ready and we are going to assemble it. Let's start with the inside of the chuck. We need to connect these pyramids with springs to get construction like this. It needs to be inserted inside the cap. And this small thing needs to be inserted to the bottom part of the chuck and then we need to twist all the parts together. We put some oil in the shaft so that everything slides well inside the tube and does not corrode. Fix it inside with a special screw and attach the black stop to the opposite side. Assembling the finished restored parts gives me a special sense of pleasure. It's like a reward after a long job done. I think you viewers will also find this process very enjoyable. Add a little grease to the gears for better sliding and it's all done! Just look at how beautiful it is! This drill probably didn't come out of the factory as shiny as it is now. Later, we will cover all the parts with a thin layer of oil, so they don't rust in the future. But now, the most important thing is to check the drill in action. It works very simply. You rotate the handle and through the gears, the torque goes to the chuck in which we clamp the drill bit. You probably have to put a fulcrum against your stomach or chest bend over and start turning the handle and it drills! Of course, it doesn't happen as easily as with an electric drill, but we manage to make a hole. To make the task harder, let's try to drill a hole in this metal wrench. This is much more difficult, but surprisingly, drilling is even easier than with wood. Thank you for watching until the end, we really appreciate it, as well as your comments below the video. I think it turned out to be a great video with good results. We're going to keep this drill and maybe it will come in handy in the future.